I had a solo show in, in Pomona, and I wanted to do something just for that show. So I did these, these are uh, monotypes in the back. And this is something that I found, a cannon. So the title of this piece is called Big Guns, Little Balls, No Brains. I'm Judy Chan, and I'm from Los Angeles, born and raised in East LA, which is also called Boyle Heights. Actually, I'm Judy Kikawe Odegawa Chan. World War II broke out, and so I was three years old when our family was sent to the Japanese American, they called it relocation camp, I call it concentration camp, in Poston, Arizona. They would give us these sacks made of mattress ticking, and we had to go fill them with straw. That There was a big pile of straw, and we had to fill them with straw, and that was our bedding. I decided to create beds. I used army cots. On one of the beds, I used my mother's actual suitcase that had her name on it at the end of the bed. When I was going to do the work about the camps, I wanted to find an object or symbol that represented being Japanese, but yet being beautiful. And so I decided to use the, the crane. And it's sitting on a bed of mattress ticking. I started doing work about being in the camps and it, it was really hard for me to, to do it at first, but I decided I need to do it because I need to find out how I can express myself. So I thought I'm gonna do the cellar. I told my sister one day that I don't know why I have to have a light on all the time at night. And she said, it's probably because they used to put you in the cellar. There's a cellar under our house. I just thought, wow, that's a great image for me to use. And so I did some Italia monotypes about being in the cellar. It's very hard to be open about personal things. You know, you're, you're afraid of being judged and afraid of hurting people's feelings. But this one teacher told me, that's what art is for. It's for you to express yourself. So that's what I was doing. I started with the large cellar and then towards the end I noticed that the cellar was starting to float away. And that's kind of how it, I felt when I was doing the images, that a weight was being lifted.
But when I did this series, it was um, putting myself out there, which was scary. And, and I didn't know how um, other people would perceive what I was saying about my family. So that was a, a very difficult point for me. So after that, I was, I, w I felt free. It, it was done. I could, I could go on. So, let's see. I think what happened was. Um, because I came from ceramics, three-dimensional, it was really hard for me to get used to the two-dimensional. And that's what got me combining the two. This one, there was a um, thrift store right near my, my studio. And they had these bags of lions. So I bought a bag and I went back to the studio and I thought, wow, I really like them. So I went back and I bought the rest of them. So this piece is called False Pride. The main thing is when I, I saw Edvard Munch's show and I thought, wow, such power in somebody's work. Mark Rothko, I also love his work. If you ever stand in front of a Mark Rothko painting, you could feel the angst and the feeling that he had when he painted them. And I thought, that's what I want to do. I want to be able to have my paintings relate to other people where they could somehow relate to it in their own way, their own personal way. A lot of my work is about my own experiences, but hopefully it affects other people. And if they're starting out as artists, hopefully it'll encourage them to express themselves. I was commissioned by the Japanese American National Museum to create a piece for an exhibition they were doing called Finding Family Stories. So on one side, there's an image of me sitting on a rock. That image is from my childhood when my mother used to lock me out of the house. And there were rocks in the garden and I would just sit on the rocks and cry. There's a big chasm and then on the other panel is a picture of our old house. Hanging over them, on one side were little broken dolls, and then on the other side was jars of dirt. I think what I was trying to express was digging up the past. The title of it is What Makes a House a Home. There's a, a peacefulness, I think. Especially if, if I have music going, you kind of get lost in it. And I get very irritated if, if my husband comes and interrupts me or something, because you, it's, it's like you're in another world. You're just thinking and, and uh, creating and, um, it's very soothing. Um, it's hard to explain. I guess it's, it's, I guess if you're a musician and you're playing a violin and you're really into playing it, you know, you, you don't want to be interrupted because it, it, it's that feeling of um, uh, like peacefulness. 
usually that's if I don't have a show coming up and I'm I'm freaked out because I, I'm not ready <laughs> then that's a whole different thing but when I'm just have nothing else and I just enjoy just doing whatever it is that I'm working on I imagine the same would be for a writer you know to be in your own a little room and just creating did that answer the yeah, question okay <laughs>